Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Kiss Quotient Trilogy. I'm going to be reviewing all three books. I do give some spoiler on the second book but I do leave a timestamp for that down below. So if you guys are interested in the steamy rom-com trilogy then just keep on watching. Today I'm going to go into the Kiss Quotient Trilogy. We have the Kiss Quotient the Bride Test, and then the third book, The Heart Principle. And sorry if you can see my pile of books behind me. I know I keep talking about this bookshelf. I promise I am getting it. Hopefully this will be my last video, if not second to last video, until I get that bookshelf. Just be patient with me. So I'm going to record setting it up and then putting my books on. And also I'm going to do a video on all the books that I own. So look forward to that. I do upload every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Eastern time just in case I don't know if I've said that before I probably haven't but I upload every Tuesday just because I do work a full-time job during the week so I can do one video a week right now to get started I'm going in with nude light Huda Beauty palette and I'm taking this purple shade right up here in this corner and I'm gonna put that all over my crease and the first book in this trilogy that I'm gonna speak about is the kiss quotient now all three of these books have smut in it which if you don't know what that is it is sex in a book so they are steamy rom-coms which I personally really did enjoy because you got the aspect of like a cute rom-com book and then you got some steamy smutty scenes thrown in there as well oh and I don't know if I made it clear but I did do one eye off camera just because I was trying to do a different look today but it wasn't working out for me so next I'm gonna go in with this pink shade and I'm gonna put it in my inner third of my eye and then I'm gonna put this purple shade on the middle of my lid and outer corner if you don't like steam or smut in a book I wouldn't recommend this series you could read the second book in the series because I feel like it has the least amount of smutty steamy scenes like that one's more like a rom-com so if that isn't your cup of tea i would recommend that book in the series for you if you're gonna read all three then i would advise you read them in order and you can read them out of order because you do get introduced to the next character in like all the books but it's in a way where like if you missed one you're not really missing anything. If you're only going to read one or two in the series, then the order doesn't really matter. This is the first book in the series. It's The Kiss Quotient, and it's about Stella and Michael. And Stella has Asperger's, so it's a mild form of autism. And all three of the books deal with a character dealing with autism. So I like it because it does give you different perspectives, especially since autism is such a broad spectrum. So n not everyone on the spectrum is going to be acting the same way. And you see that in this book. So I'm going to just do my liner and lashes off camera as usual and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to go in with this Good Molecule Silicone Priming Moisturizer. So this book is about Stella and Michael and... I'm going to warn you off the back, like, this is the most smuttiest out of all three of the books in the trilogy. Because of the nature of the story, it makes sense why it's the most smutty, um, why it's the most smuttiest book in the trilogy. So, Stella has Asperger's and she's having a hard time dating. She has a successful career and her family wants her to start settling down and finding a husband. So in her mind, because all her sexual experience have went terribly, she believes that if she gets better at sex, then she can find a man and get a husband. And I'm going to use this Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. For her to get better at sex, she hires an escort who ends up being Michael. So I'm pretty sure I spoke about this book in my November wrap-ups, if I'm not mistaken. I'll leave it down below. This book was an enjoyable read for me. I gave it a four star. It was also really easy to get through, super entertaining. Michael's an escort, Stella's hiring him to help her learn how to have better sex. So obviously it's a good read. In my opinion, this book is the best one in the trilogy. Um, if you just read 
I would recommend just reading The Kiss Quotient and stopping the trilogy if you're not like that invested into this author or if again it's not like a crazy five star read for you. Michael is the sweetest and most patient hero. You absolutely fall in love with him and while Michael is helping Stella like you also see on the other hand Stella helping Michael like accepting that he's not like his father even though he thinks he is. He obviously doesn't think highly of his father since he doesn't want to be associated with him. Well, I'm not gonna give any more spoilers on this book. It was, again, my favorite read out of the trilogy. The next book in the trilogy that I'm gonna speak about is The Bright Test. And I'm just contouring with my Revolution foundation stick as usual. Probably never gonna change my contour routine. Well, this is the second book in the Kiss Quotient trilogy and this one I have a lot, a lot of thoughts on. Like I had so many thoughts on this book that I literally wrote it down in my book journal because I did not want to forget these points. So I'm going to give you a summary of the book and then I'm going to go into my opinions and spoilers. If you don't want to hear any spoilers, I'm going to leave the timestamp down below when I'm done summarizing what this book is about and then you could just jump onto the next book. This book is about Kai and Kai also has autism. So his mom wants him to get married but she knows that he is more to himself and doesn't date. So what his mom does is go to Vietnam. Yeah, I believe they're Vietnamese. She goes to Vietnam and literally gets him like a male order bride and brings her over to the United States. She makes her son promise her that he will live with the girl for the summer and if he at the end of the summer doesn't want to marry her that they'll just send her back to Vietnam. Well that's all I'm gonna say about this problematic book but if you don't want to hear any spoilers then you can just timestamp forward down below. So if you are still here at this point of the video then you obviously don't care about spoilers or you've already read the book. Okay so the first <laughs> issue I have with this book is that when Kai's mom is in Vietnam and she's trying to proposition Esma, that's the, her name is Mai, but then she comes to America, she takes an American name, Esma, and since she's referred to more as Esma in the book than Mai, I'm going to call her Esma. But yeah, while she's propositioning Esma to come to America and literally seduce her son into marriage, first Esma is like, no, I can't force your son like I can't trap your son. Then Esma goes home and tells her mom about the encounter between Kai's mother and the proposition that she has and her mom's like you have to take it like you have to do it you have to give us and your daughter a better life here which then she gets convinced that okay she has to do this like this is the only way she's gonna give her daughter a better life like she's going to make this man fall in love with her and marry her and I just didn't like it because like and again this is just my personal opinion here in America like when it comes to foreigners we have this misconception that all foreigners are here to marry an American for a visa and a better life and money and I just don't like how this book kind of from the foreigner side makes that true because I feel like there's many reasons than just getting a significant other that a foreigner can come to the states and give themselves a better life. I didn't like the fact that like Kai's mom like push this girl on him like she's gonna stay at your house I don't care what you say and the fact that she knows and they obviously say it in the book that Kai he's a really passive guy like he's not gonna argue like he'll do whatever you want him to do to keep you happy that they kind of exploit that in him like he's a really nice person and you guys are taking advantage of his kindness and what he does for others like I didn't like that and I didn't like that it was coming from his mom like she was telling Esma like tell him to do this for you because he's not gonna say no he's gonna do whatever you want him to do and I'm just like you're his mom like how are you going to use that against him I just didn't enjoy reading that like I almost did not finish this but like 
so much of that was so problematic and i know i'm going in on this book but i just like was so floored sometimes like i know rom-coms are unrealistic like that's why we love them we love the fantasy romantic aspect of it but this was like unrealistic to like a whole nother level esma like finds a motorcycle in kai's house and then like all of a sudden she has a license i mean well she doesn't have a license but she's just driving it like where's your license girl like you don't even have a state id and then like when you first meet esma like when she's cleaning the bathrooms like you like her but then all of a sudden like her character changes like she's okay with using people to better her life but she wasn't a second girl but then she talks to her mom and she's manipulated into using people and then like compared to the kiss quotient like this one was such a slow Burn. that's why i said like if you are not a big fan of steam like you can read this out of order and still enjoy it i personally didn't enjoy this story just because of all the problematic elements i had with it and then like they also had like this side storyline where she was coming to america to look for her father i'm not like they like they kind of hint in the book like look to look for her father because she could get a visa through him but like you read like 10 chapters and there's not a word said about the father and then all of a sudden they're talking about him and trying to find him and it's like well where was this energy 10 chapters ago like you've been in america now for like two months and you haven't been looking for your father on goodreads i gave it a three stars but in real life this is like a 2.5 maybe even pushing a two but i like to read books like i just finished this and like marinate on it <laughs> and then decide what i really rate it and hold on like i wrote a chapter down but like i don't know why i wrote the chapter down yes and now i remember chapter 21 was my favorite chapter in the whole book because it was michael and stella's wedding and i really did enjoy that chapter like the dynamic between esma and kai like the last problematic thing i had with this story is that esma really really wanted kai to say that he loved her. Esma, when she started developing feelings for Kai, she really, really wanted him to admit that he loved her and he was unable to do so. Even though he did, he did propose to her because he didn't want her to leave and go back to Vietnam and he never see her again. He was unable to admit that he loves her. So she denies the proposal. She's like, I'm not going to marry you. But then she'll turn around and marry his brother. Like, and I get it. Quan that's Kai's brother who the third book is about but Quan comes to Esma and he's like hey I'm gonna go in with a benefit California Quan comes in and he's like hey Esma like I have an idea obviously to get my brother back to you but if this doesn't work then I'll marry you so you can scratch that the reason this is so problematic for me is because when Kai's like no I can't say I love you but I will marry you so that you will have your visa Esma's like, no, I deserve better. I deserve a, a love marriage. Like, I don't deserve just someone who is going to give me a visa and leave me in a loveless marriage. So then Qu Quan is like, hey, I know you only have like a week left or something. And I know you're fighting with my brother. I have an idea to get him to come back to you. You're going to have to marry me. And if he doesn't come back to you, I'll still marry you so you can have the visa and we could do the do the divorce process and then it's crazy to me that she says yes to that plan because it's like you just said that you didn't want to be in a loveless marriage but now Quan is offering you a loveless marriage and you're saying yes for the visa like this is the issue I have with this book and I'm getting so worked up because I just hate the portrayal it gives on foreigners and women because like make it make sense like if you're gonna say yes his brother and be in a loveless marriage there why not just be in a loveless a loveless marriage with kai who you know cares about you to me it's like where is the como to say character development for asthma like girl power not gonna be in a loveless marriage but yeah i'll take your brother but hey maybe i'm just thinking too much into it please leave your opinions down below now if i wasn't doing this video i would have dnf this book 100 percent. i needed it for the video so i didn't okay so the last book in this trilogy is the heart so i'm going in with ofra rodeo drive highlighter this book is about kwan which is michael's cousin and it's kai's older brother i believe so with this book i am 
about 50% of the way through and I'm enjoying my time reading it. It's not my favorite one in the series. Obviously the first one, The Kiss Quotient is. But like I said, this is about Quan and Anna. Anna is like a violinist prodigy, but she's kind of lost her mojo. Like she hasn't been able to play like her usual self. So she starts seeing a therapist to help her get over that hump. And in this book, I'm not 100% sure because they haven't revealed it yet, like what has happened to Quan. They just hint at it subtly. I'm going to go in with Huda Beauty Hustler and MAC Lip Pencil and Spice. But Quan's been dealing with some health issues that has, I feel like that has made him insecure. So he's trying to get back in the dating. And Anna has just went like viral on social media for her violin skills. So that's also playing into her nerves and why she's not able to get back into playing like she used to. But she's dating this guy who wants to have like an open relationship and see other people and she's not 100% okay with it but she's not gonna fight him on it. So that's where she meets Quan on a dating site and they are supposed to have a one-night stand and the reason she's doing this for herself is because she's always masking herself to fit the narratives of other people. She just wants to have a no strings attached, doing something for herself, being herself, and not caring what this other person thinks because she's never gonna see them again. But things happen and they constantly end up seeing each other. So that's how that story is going. I'm enjoying it so far. It's like a four star read for me. If it gets better, it might be pushed up to a five, but right now it's a four, which is a good rom com, super cute. There's not as much theme, obviously, like I said, as the first book, but there is more theme than the second book. Now, I am going to give a little bit of spoilers, so if you don't want to hear the spoilers, then you can just jump to the outro. I will leave that down below. But in this book, Anne doesn't know that she's on the autism spectrum. Um, her therapist actually points that out to her. So she has to grapple with the diagnosis she got, but she's also kind of relieved that there's something to explain why she is the way she is and i absolutely love kwan i loved him in all three of the books like he makes appearances in all the books and i loved him in every single one he doesn't disappoint in the heart principle in a book that is literally about him. so i'm at work and i just wanted to update you guys because i finished the heart principle and i just want to talk about it real quick when reading this book i felt like it had a whole different tone to it like a more personal one and then when reading the author's note like she states that this was more of like her personal experience put into this story and you can really find just pop in here and say that i definitely recommend the kiss quotient and the heart principle if you guys are interested in any of those books in that trilogy so to wrap up my final thoughts on this trilogy definitely read the kiss quotient this is so cute super steamy right up my alley rom-com smutty books i'm here for the love the romance and the smut i would recommend that you stop at this book because the other two really aren't worth it in the series but if you want to continue i would just jump straight into the heart principle and don't even bother with the bride dust i do love all the covers of this trilogy like they're super cute look at that and that's it for my video today. This is my makeup. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.